This presentation provides an explanation of the schedules used when applying consequences in operant conditioning. This is the fifth in a series of six presentations on behavioral learning theories as they are applied to schooling and education. My name is Bill Hewitt and I am Professor Emeritus at Valdosta State University at adjunct faculty at Capella and Walden Universities. There are two primary objectives for this presentation. First, at the end of the presentation, you should be able to name and describe the four categories of schedules used in the application of consequences. And second, you should be able to describe the pattern of behavior associated with each schedule and provide examples of when each should be used. Remember that operant conditioning is a study of the impact of consequences on voluntary behavior. A consequence is a stimulus that when it follows a response will change the likelihood that response will occur again. This presentation will focus on the schedules that are used when adding or subtracting consequences. There are two basic categories. Continuous, which means that a consequence is added or subtracted after every target behavior is emitted, and intermittent, which means that a consequence is not always added or subtracted after every target behavior is emitted. Continuous reinforcement is excellent for getting a new behavior started using positive reinforcement. However, the behavior quickly stops when reinforcement is withdrawn. However, it is the schedule of choice for decreasing the frequency of a target behavior using either response cost or punishment. That is, every time the target behavior is emitted, the consequence should be taken away in the case of response cost or added in the case of punishment. Using any type of intermittent schedule dilutes the impact of these techniques. While a continuous schedule is always based on the frequency of the response, an intermittent schedule may be based either on the passage of time or the frequency of the emitted target behavior. Because intermittent schedules are only recommended for increasing behavior, it means that the number of correct responses is counted. Additionally, the consequence may be delivered based on a fixed amount of time or a fixed number of correct responses or a slightly different amount of time or number of correct responses that vary around a particular number. This results in four classes of intermittent schedules. The first is a fixed interval schedule. In this schedule, a consequence is given or removed when the first target response is emitted after a set amount of time has passed. The amount of time that pa must pass before the observer begins to look for the target behavior again is always the same. An example of the use of this schedule is a spelling test every Friday. No matter how much a student may study the spelling words, the opportunity for reinforcement does not arrive before Friday. The pattern of behavior for a fixed interval schedule shows what is called a scalloping effect. That is, the rate of behavior increases until just before that opportunity to be reinforced. Once that is passed, that is, the spelling test is given, the behavior stops and then begins to increase again as the time for possibly receiving reinforcement nears. The second schedule is a variable interval schedule. In this schedule, a consequence is given or removed when the first target response is emitted after a set amount of time has passed. A different period of time is then set before the behavior begins to look for the target behavior again. The different time periods will average to a specific number, five minutes, 10 minutes, two weeks, something like that. An example of the use of this schedule is a pop quiz. A student may know that a quiz will be given once or twice a week, but is not sure exactly which day the quiz will occur. The pattern of behavior for a variable interval schedule shows some variation in the rate of behavior, but does not show the scalloping effect. That is, the rate of behavior increases and decreases a little over time, but does not stop completely or increase dramatically. 
Notice, however, that the rate of responding is higher in the variable interval schedule than it is in the fixed interval schedule. The third type of schedule is labeled a fixed ratio schedule. In this schedule, a consequence is given or removed when a specific number of target responses are emitted. A continuous schedule is really a fixed ratio schedule with a number of correct responses set at one. The number of target behaviors that must be emitted before a consequence is added or subtracted is always the same. An example of the use of this schedule is the completion of 10 math problems for homework. The reinforcement is not added until all 10 math problems are completed correctly. The pattern of behavior for a fixed ratio schedule shows a steady rate of behavior, a rest period after the specific number of target behaviors is emitted and reinforced, and then the resumption of a steady rate of behavior. Notice also that the rate of responding is higher for a fixed ratio schedule than it is in the variable interval schedule. The fourth and last schedule is a variable ratio schedule. In this schedule, a consequence is given or removed when a specific number of target responses are emitted, and then a different number of required target responses is set, and that number of target behaviors must be emitted before the reinforcement is provided. And again, the, the required number of target behaviors will, be, will average a specific number. An example of the use of this schedule is when a student raises her hand to be called upon. A student may know that she will not be called on every time, but if she raises her hand often enough, she will be called upon by the teacher at some point. The pattern of behavior for a variable ratio schedule shows a high rate of responding. There is no rest period as in the fixed ratio schedule. This concludes the presentation on schedules used in operant conditioning. Previous presentations focused on an overview of three behavioral learning theories, classical conditioning, operant conditioning, and contiguity theory, a more complete introduction to classical conditioning theory, an overview of operant conditioning theory, and an explanation of using operant conditioning techniques. The next presentation provides a summary on using behavior modification techniques from both classical and operant conditioning theories. Additionally, there are several short quizzes that learners can use to check their understandings of the different learning theories.